news. Right now, Raul has a very special story that reminds us what the holiday season is really all about. Raul? All right, Arthel, good morning. This is, of course, a special time of year for being thankful for what we have and for giving to others. Well, two families know the true meaning of Thanksgiving. They share a unique bond that will never be broken. From tragedy comes a selfless spirit that gave new life to someone in dire need. For all of his 15 years, Robbie Courtney was a vibrant, energetic, healthy boy. Six feet tall, 180 pounds. Weightlifting and video games were his passion. He was a big teddy bear kind of guy. Robbie went to sleep one night in May of 2005. He never woke up. He died from a brain aneurysm. Five months earlier, 61-year-old Maria Flores had suffered a near-fatal heart attack. The damage was so severe that she needed a new heart or she would die. She waited until that heart, Robbie's heart, became available. There's no words. How can you express, when you say simply thank you, when it's, you're alive because of these people? Hello. More than three years after Robbie's death and Maria's transplant, the two families met for the very first time here at Sharp Memorial Hospital, the same place Maria had her operation. Two families, complete strangers, brought together by tragedy and by life. You're so special because you were a good thing that came out of Robbie's death. These meetings are very rare. Only 5% of families ever meet. This was something the Courtney's and Maria wanted. And Maria wanted to know whose heart she had. It's not my heart and somebody had to die so I could live. Robbie's sister, Christina, wanted one chance to listen to Maria's new heart. Thank you. <laughs> it's your heart, Maria told her. Robbie's other organs went on to save the lives of four more people. It's good to know that Robbie lives on. As, as much as we miss him, we know that he's out there and he's helping other people. Every holiday is a special holiday for me because I'm alive. Now, Maria turned 65 in January. She's healthy. She's doing great, which is great. She also tells us that she's taken a liking to video games and asparagus, two things that Robbie really enjoyed as well. Joining us now, Robbie's sister, Christina, and Dr. Robert Adamson from Sharp's Heart Transplant Program. Thank you both for joining us on this day before Thanksgiving. Um, I wanted to talk to you first, Christina. Obviously, that was a special moment for you last week. We mentioned in the story, not a lot of people meet the families of the donors. What was that moment like for you last week? It was incredible. Words can't really describe what it was like to be with the person um, that now holds my brother's heart. It was really, really moving and touching. And it was such an emotional moment for a lot of us here watching the video last week. It brought tears to a lot of our eyes when, when you wanted to, to hear your brother's heart in, in Maria. What, what made you ask her for that? Um, what an incredible opportunity. With her there in front of me, how could I not? <laughs> Um, the last time I heard my brother's heartbeat was when he was being wheeled into surgery and he was being um, artificially um, maintained. And to hear that heartbeat three years later in someone else and know that they're alive because of that, I can't imagine a greater miracle. How special. And now you've turned that into a work with Ambassadors for Donate Life America. Now, Dr. Adamson, uh, I mean, you see the effect this has on, on these two families. You do this pretty much, this is your job, to give life. Uh, can you explain to people what the need really is out there? Because I don't think people really comprehend how important this is. Uh, basically, people are so sick, they can just go from the bed to the chair. And to have an opportunity to raise their family, return to work, uh, support their f uh, spouse, is just a miracle. And Sharp is the only facility in San Diego County that performs heart transplants? Correct. And how many do you do a year? About, I think about a dozen, is that all? Uh, between a dozen and 20. And how many are needed? Well, many more than we're able to give. Uh, at this point in time, we've done about 35 artificial hearts this year okay. uh, and about 12 or 13 regular transplants, but we could use more organs. I mean, it could be the, it's 12 to 15 a year, but easily it could be a lot more than that. And that's where the mission that, Christina, you've kind of championed this mission now, along with your mom, Debbie. You guys went through this heartbreak, obviously, and now you want to get that message out. What do you want to tell people from your experience? 
Um, there's over 100,000 people yeah. in the United States on the waiting list for an, a life-saving organ transplant. 20% mm. uh, of those people are here in California. This is such an incredible, um, incredible purpose to be a part of. I feel honored to work for One Legacy and to support organ donation. 18 people die um, every few minutes waiting for an organ. It's incredible. And it's um, something special for you to take such a personal story, such a personal tragedy and turn it into basically your life mission for yourself and for your mom. Of course, yes. All right, let's talk statistics now, Dr. Adams, and if we could. Survival rates have improved dramatically in the last, in the 40 years that we've been doing heart transplants. Talk to us about those. Right. Uh, currently at Sharp Hospital, about 95% of the patients who are transplanted are alive at one year. About 70% are alive between 8 and 10 years, and about 50% are alive at 15 to 20 years. And huge strides that have been made in the technology, obviously. Uh, the first transplant, I believe, in 1968 up at Stanford Hospital. So Correct. the difference between then and now, obviously, incredible. Night and day. We can now monitor for rejection very easily. We have newer and more specific and gentler immunosuppressant medicines. If I were to bring a husband and wife here, uh, you couldn't even tell who had been transplanted and who had wow. not. It's, it's, it's really amazing. Um, and we talked in the story, obviously, Robbie actually saved a total of five lives because we saw there his heart, his heart went to Maria, but four other people received his other organs. So if that isn't a great example of, of what organ donation is all about, Christina, what, what do you have to say about that? I mean, your brother saved five lives. It was incredible. It was. Um, what I could say about it is to talk to your family about yeah. donation. Make sure that your loved ones know your wishes. And to go online, if you can sign up at www.donatelifecalifornia.org or check yes at the DMV. Make sure that everyone knows um, your wishes. All right, Christina, Dr. Adamson, thank you both for joining us. And thank you especially for sharing your family story with us. And Dr. Adamson, great work as always. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. All right. Arthel? Very, very touching. Thank you very much, Raul.